It happened one day near December's end. Two neighbors called on an old time friend. And they found his shop so meager and mean, made gay with a thousand bows of green. And Conrad was sitting with his face a shine, when suddenly he stopped as he stitched a twine. And said, old friends, at dawn today, when the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me, and he said, I'm coming, your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stir, strewing my shop with branches of fir. The table is set and the kettle is shined, and over the rafters, holy as twine. And now I'll wait for my Lord to appear, and listen closely, so I will hear. His steps as he nears my humble place, and I open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day that he had known. For long since has his family passed away, and Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest, that this Christmas would be his dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart, and every sound he would rise with a start, and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the vision he had had just a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, he only could see the snow-covered ground, was a shabby old beggar whose shoes were torn, all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched and he went to the door and he said, your feet must be so frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you and a coat that'll keep you warmer too. So with a grateful heart, the man went away, but Conrad had noticed the time of day and he wondered what made the dear Lord so late and how much longer that he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock on the door, he ran, but it was a stranger once more. A bent old lady with a shawl of black and a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked for only a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on this Christmas day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to set at his table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he'd saw that the hours were slipping away. And the Lord hadn't come as he said that he would, and Conrad felt sure that he had misunderstood. But when out of the silence he heard a cry, please help me and tell me, where am I? So again he opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before. For it was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on this Christmas day. But again, Conrad's heart was heavy and sad, but he knew that he could make this little girl glad. So he called her in and wiped her tears and quieted her all of her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as he entered his own darkened door, he knew that the Lord wasn't coming today for the hours of Christmas had now passed away. So he went to his room and he knelt down to pray and said, Dear Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me? For I wanted so much your face to see. With soft in the silence a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor, Three times I came to your lowly door. For I see I was the beggar with bruised cold feet, and I was the woman that you gave something to eat. And I was the child on the lonely street. Three times I've knocked, and three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all of the gifts, love is the best, and I was honored to be your Christmas guest.